Billy stood straight up, his saddle in one hand and the hackamore on the other, and stared at Julie as though he was seeing a vision. I swear I felt electricity, dry and hot in the air like those times in summer when a lightning storm moves through. Julie seemed drawn to Billy like steel dust to a magnet. As for Billy, well, he looked at Julie exactly the way a cat looks at cream. Howdy, Julie, I said. I didn't see you come up. She smiled, but her eyes never left Billy. This is Billy Christmas, the rough string rider, I told her. Billy, meet Miss Julie, Thane's daughter. Billy came out of his trance. Still looking at Julie, he slowly lowered the saddle and took off his hat. I'm very pleased to meet you, Miss Julie, he said, as if that wasn't already plenty obvious. Thank you, said Julie. I must say you seem to know your way around horses. I like to watch a bronc rider who knows his trade. It's a rough trade, miss, but yes, it's the one I know. They both fell silent then, but their eyes kept up the conversation. Neither Julie nor Billy paid me any more mind than if I was a horse apple in the dust. They didn't seem to know I was even there. The way they kept gazing at one another put me in mind of that schoolyard game where kids lock eyes and the first one who blinks loses. I reckon neither of them would have noticed if a tornado had blowed through the corral. I don't know how long the staring contest would have went on if something hadn't come along to break it up, but the fact is something, or rather someone, did. Just outside the corral stood the bull of the woods himself, Julie's daddy and our boss, Thane McAllister. Thane stood solid as a tree, his boots planted wide in the loose dirt. Beneath a white walrus mustache, his chin jutted forward like a granite ledge. He squinted up at his daughter. Get down off of there, Julie, he said quietly. These boys have work to do. Thane opened the gate and stepped inside. You'd be Bill Christmas, he said, sizing Billy up. I'm told you're a top hand when it comes to setting the wild and the snuffy ones. That's what you're paying me for, Billy said, smiling. Thane's eyes widened, then narrowed again. Close up, he seemed even bigger than his three hundred pounds. Why, yes, he said, smiling. That, and only that. Julie hadn't come down from the top rail as Thane had told her to. Below her hat brim, her brows met in the beginnings of a frown, and her jaw took on a stubborn set. Thane spoke to her again, and there was just the hint of an edge to his voice. I'd like you to walk up to the house with me, sweetheart, he said. And Julie reluctantly stepped down from her perch. Her black mare stood just outside the corral where she'd left it, and Thane nodded at the animal, then turned to me. Put my daughter's mare up, will you, Merlin? I don't expect Julie will be needing her again today.'